back to Bearcat Update. I'm Jenny James. And I'm Alex Sanchez. This past weekend, Northwest hosted their third indoor track meet. Our reporter Nolan Brooks reached out to the team to catch up with how they were competing midway through the indoor season. Nolan? Track season is in full swing here at Northwest. As the Bearcats are already halfway through their season, I caught up with head coach Brandon Masters to see how his top athletes are starting to emerge. I think the, the leaders are certainly uh, making themselves known at this point. Kevin Schultz is, is leading our team uh, conference level and national level at this point uh, in high jump, heptathlon. He's also on our 4x4 team. Uh, 4x4 team is ranked in the nationally in the top five right now. Um, Kareem uh, Chingley has uh, been a, 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 a force over the last little bit in the distance, and uh, he certainly made him himself um, uh, a name at the national level and the conference level as well. Senior heptathlete Kevin Schultz reflects on the team's performance halfway through the season. At the halfway point of the season, the team is solid. I mean, we still got work to do. Uh, the championship part of the season is until the end, so we only have one meet that actually counts. So it's always a progression of working towards that meet. And I think uh, when we actually get there, we're going to be really good when it counts. With indoor conference closing in and outdoor season not too far behind, Coach Masters knows his athletes are ready to compete. Well, I think uh, they know a lot more what I'm looking for. And as we go, uh, you know, I talked earlier about we're still sore. We're still working. Uh, we're just starting to peel off a little bit for a conference coming up in the next three weeks. Nationals in the next four. Um, so uh, once nationals are done and in, in, indoors, then we can really start working on outdoor, which provides a whole new uh, group of events as its own, uh, its own unique sport. As the Bearcats look forward to conference play and the upcoming outdoor season, everything seems to be falling in place for the Bearcats. For Bearcat Update, I'm Nolan Brooks. Thanks, Nolan. The team had some major success this weekend. Phil Elliott won the hip tathlon. Kevin Schultz took first place in the men's high jump with a jump of 7.25. Marcus Klein provisionally qualified in the long jump with a 23.04 jump. Omar Austin set a new school record in the 400 meters with a time of 47.62. For the ladies, a lot of them provisionally qualified this weekend as well. Haley Craig with the shot put toss of 14.08. Heba Magoob with the 56.44 in the 400 meter dash. Jordan Hammond with a 8.67 in the 60 meter hurdles. Mercedes Isaacson Clover in triple jump with a 11.87 jump. And last but not least, rounding out the national qualifiers and taking first in the women's 4x4, Jordan Hammond, Heba Magoob, Mercedes Axis and Clover and Addie Polzer ran a 349.92. The team will be headed to Lincoln, Nebraska for one more indoor track meet before the indoor conference championships in Maryville. We are going to take a quick break, but stick around. We have a special edition of Bearcat Boulevard coming up next. You're watching Bearcat Update on KNWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. Changing up Bearcat Boulevard this week, our BCU analyst John Walker talked with Will Warren, basketball statistician, to break down Bearcat men's basketball this season. John? Alex, Jenny, thanks guys. Today I am joined by Will Warren, um, all the way from Tennessee. He is a statistician for Gyrate Stats. Um, you can check out his Twitter handle, that is at Gyrate Stats. Um, so, Will, um, you are an avid Tennessee Volunteer fan um, and slowly becoming a Northwest Bearcat fan. How did you really discover one of the top Division II basketball programs in the middle of nowhere? Uh, sort of by accident. So with what I do here uh, in Tennessee, I do uh, video previews of every Tennessee basketball game for a local outlet. And with that, I have a subscription to Synergy Sports, which runs stats for most every college basketball program in America and the NBA. So uh, with that, I was able to, uh, you, you can look at not only Division One but Division Two, II, Three, NAIA, et cetera. And so I just was curious, you know, a few weeks back, you know, I figured enough time had passed through the season to see who's the best offenses, who's the best defenses out there. And so defenses, you know, it's kind of the usual suspects, but offenses I went and looked through across all levels, and I saw this team, Northwest Missouri State, 
that was levels ahead of anyone else. And I was blown away because, one, I didn't know real. I had heard of the team because I knew they played in the Division Two title game a couple years ago and won. But I had no idea about them otherwise. I didn't even know what Northwest Missouri was. So <laughs> that, finding that out has been a very pleasant surprise. Um, getting to, you know, I've been able to watch a couple games through the Synergy Services um just becoming more familiar with, you know, in my opinion, the most efficient and best offense in America has been very fun. Gotcha. And obviously one of the things you focus on in all of your studies is efficiency. Um, just how efficient has Ben McCollum's basketball team been throughout the course of this season so far? So what you look for in this is points per possession. And so possession is obviously anytime you have the ball and you take a shot, you turn it over, or another event happens, maybe a free throw, of course. And so the goal in basketball is to score as many points in as few possessions as possible. You can do this by shortening the game. You can even do this by lengthening the game and playing fast, as long as you're scoring a lot for each possession you have. What Northwest does is they do the former. They slow it down, not to like a Virginia level necessarily, but to, you know, 65, 67 possessions a game. They're, and what they're doing is more amazing than what I've seen division one at least since uh frank kaminsky wisconsin is not only are they by effective field goal percentage which you know gives more weight to your three pointers not only are they the best shooting team in division two they have the lowest turnover rate and they are uh the most efficient offense because of this they're the most efficient by you know 0 0.03 points per possession uh across all of college basketball not just division two Gotcha. And obviously, um, being able to outscore your opponents, be more efficient, is one of the big parts of the game. Last Saturday, they hit the road two times on Thursday and on Saturday. Um, on Saturday, when they went and played the Blue Tigers of Lincoln, um, you mentioned their turnover efficiency and how they don't turn the ball over very much at all. Out of all of the times they touched the ball on Saturday, they only turned the ball over one time to Lincoln. How important is that for a team coming down the stretch of conference playing into tournaments? I mean, does that really signify that the It's massively efficiency? important because every turnover you have is a possession that not only ends with zero points, but is more likely to end with the other team scoring points. Uh, turnovers are the biggest source of, you know, transition buckets, etc. in games. So by because you look at Northwest last night, so they had 61 possessions. They scored 75 points. That's a pretty good rate. That's about 1.23 points per possession. But you wouldn't have thought that based on the fact that they shot 5 of 27, 3, and 40% from the field. Which is the very unlike them. And, right, Sorry. because they're the best shooting team in Division Two, And for them to get that level of points per possession is because they didn't turn the ball over. And I, if I remember correctly, they didn't turn it over until there was a shot clock violation with, I think, two or three minutes ago, which is profoundly amazing they were that close to a zero turnover game which has not happened in years in division one and will you know once your initial tweet broke um about the shot chart and efficiency of ben mccollum's team your twitter it was already kind of popular and then started to just jump to new heights that it really hadn't before because of the popularity of all the students here at northwest um you have become a sensation on campus so far from guest starring on a podcast, on our own student radio show, um, and now on Bearcat Boulevard on KNWT. Um, you even got some of the basketball guys to send you a care package with a couple of t-shirts in it. And just tell me how, what, what have you really enjoyed about this whole process so far and everything about this? Uh, well, one, the t-shirt. I've worn it twice now. It fits great really good to wear it in public and have people uh, ask me, you know, what's Bearcat basketball? Why are you what's wearing a Northwest shirt in, in the middle of Tennessee? Yeah, <laughs> when they ask me, you know, they ask me where that is, and I say, well, uh, it's uh, close to the border of, uh, you know, I'd have to look at a map to tell you, but it's close to the border of some state. And see, I love it because uh, Northwest is in a pretty small town by my understanding. I grew up in a small town I think in the middle of Tennessee. We have like 5,000 people in Mary. 10,000 and about 5,000 of those are students. Um, See, that's great because, yeah, I grew up in a town of 12,000, like way away from any big city. So and that's it, it's like a cool, relatable moment to me of like, what if the best team in Division Two just happened to be in my hometown? That'd be pretty fun. 
But, you know, obviously the T-shirt, I've really enjoyed doing these interviews. It's crazy to me that probably per capita, I seem to have more fans in Maryville, Missouri than I do in the town where I live. <laughs> but uh, I'm enjoying it. And, you know, obviously I want it, to, it's fun to get on the bandwagon while it's going. I want to ride this bandwagon as far as I, as I can. I made a deal with a couple guys, I think, from the student newspaper. They will root for Tennessee as long as I root for Northwest Missouri to make it to uh, and win the Division II title. And, Will, you know, you mentioned um, with the Synergy app um, or software, however, you've been able to watch some of Ben McCollum's team's games, um, kind of track their stats a little bit here and there. Um, out of watching their games, um, I'm not sure how many you've watched, but out of watching the ones that you have, compiling all of these stats, what do you truly think the full potential of the team this year is? Like, where do you think this team could end up? I think they should be considered the Division II title favorite over uh, Bellarmine, over any other squad out there. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, the offense is great, obviously, but the defense has been pretty solid, too. I was really impressed by the 41-point outing they allowed on Thursday night in a game where they didn't, it wasn't their best offensive night, really, outside of the one I like done. And uh, for, for them to be doing that, you know, it's just, in Division Two, it's rare, and Gonzaga is a real exception this year, to see teams just obliterating their conference opponents left and right like Northwest has. And to me, that speaks of, you know, against your common competition, and to my understanding, what is either the best or second best conference in Division Two, for them to be obliterating opponents like this is something else. Alrighty, Will, thanks for joining us today. That is all the time we have on Bearcat Boulevard, but thanks for investing time into our campus as a whole. Everyone make sure to check out the full interview on Twitter at Bearcat Update underscore eight. And as always, follow me on Twitter for updates on Bearcat Athletic throughout the week. Alex, Jenny, back to you guys. Thanks, John. Make sure you check him out on Twitter to keep up to date on Will's basketball stats. We are going to take a quick break, but stick around. You're watching Bearcat Update on KWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. Although it's only February, the football team is still making moves to get better. We're talking about National Signing Day. The Northwest football team added 47 power players to their roster. Our reporter caught up with some of the Maryville signees to see why they chose to become a Bearcat. Joe? In 2017, Maryville seniors Eli Dallas and Tyler Houchin celebrated the Smoothhounds fifth football state championship. One season, and three months later, the duo has set their eyes on helping a team 1.6 miles away from Maryville High School earn its seventh ring. This is one of the things you dream about when you're young. I mean, looking at those college football players when you're 8, 9, 10 years old, you're just like, one day that's going to be me. And for me and Tyler, we were lucky enough to make that dream come true. Dallas and Houchin signed their letters of intent to become Bearcats as part of National Signing Day, February 6th. This year's signing class features 47 athletes, the majority coming from Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa. Though Dallas and Houchin were right down the road, Wright says recruiting them was no different than any other athlete. It's not our God-given right to get, to get kids from Maryville, Missouri. I think that we have to make them want, want to feel welcomed here, and, and we definitely tried to do that with those two. Northwest football's attraction to the two townies was built off their athleticism and Maryville's winning culture. Spoofhounds coach Matt Webb says that Dallas and Houchin are in good hands, heading into an environment similar to his own. You know, Tyler and Eli both, uh, you know, they, they, all they know is, is kind of a winning tradition. And, and um, you know, they're going from one culture where team, being a great teammate is, is uh, you know, instilled upon them, and they're going into another one with the Bearcats, the same thing, be a great teammate. Reporting for Bearcat Update, I'm Joe Andrews. Thanks, Joe. The boys will continue to embrace the culture as they become Bearcats. Now, baseball. The baseball team is back home after a seven-game road trip down in Arkansas's 60-degree weather. They come back with the win over 13th nationally ranked Southern Arkansas and look to improve their 2-5 record as they head to Joplin, Missouri to play an additional three games this weekend. 
The softball team also was in Arkansas this past weekend to open their season. The girls took game one against Midwestern State 6-3 but dropped game two. Arkansas Monticello 0-2. The girls will be heading back down to Arkansas this weekend to finish out the Arkansas Monticello tournament with six more games. Both the men and women's basketball teams traveled to Lindenwood last Thursday, followed by Lincoln on Saturday. First up, the women, after having a slow start, they couldn't recover and dropped to the Lions 71-55. Kylie Coleman hit a career high with 18 points in that game. On Saturday, the ladies held it to a close game against the Blue Tigers, but after a 6-0 run, Lincoln didn't look back and took the game 64-51. to The men performed a little differently, improving their number one national rank to hold true. Not only was their offense on fire, shooting 58.1%, but holding the Lions to just 30.2%. They rolled over Lindenwood, taking the game 72-41. On Saturday, the men were down six at half, but rallied back with Joey Wittes scoring 30 points and Trevor Hudgens with 24. The Cats took over and defeated the Blue Tigers 75-57. With their 23-0 record, the men are the only team in all of college basketball that is undefeated. Both the men and women will be back in Maryville this week as they take on Central Missouri on Wednesday and Southwest Baptist on Saturday. Now that's the end of our show, but first let's take a look at our top picks for the week. Both our men and women's basketball teams will be taking on Central Missouri on Wednesday for the pink out game. And something to note, the current men's conference record for consecutive free throws is held by Central Missouri's Reggie Soward with 36 from the 04-05 season. Hudgens is currently sitting at 31. We can't wait to see if he will continue the streak after the next two games. Well, let's hope so. With only two games under their belt, the Northwest softball team will be heading back down to Arkansas to play six more games. I look forward to see how the girls will perform with several veterans and a solid 2018 performance to bring them to their 2019 season. Yes, for sure. That's it for our show. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Bearcat Update. You can follow us on Twitter at Bearcat Update underscore 8. Or watch all of our previous episodes on YouTube at KWT8. Thanks for watching and have a great night. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I wanted to congratulate you on finishing this episode of Bearcat Update. You can catch last week's episode up here or all of our previous episodes down here. Check it out. Do it.